What is up, YouTube? Bitch, with a franchise guy coming at you again with a no sub of Madden 19 franchise mode featuring your Philadelphia Eagles. You saw right there, Carson Wentz is the player of the week for the offense. I mean, he's looking to repeat this week. I mean, taking on the Atlanta Falcons, Matt Ryan, Devontae Freeman taking on uh, Carson Wentz, Corey Clement. I don't think I don't think those two things add up. I think this is going to be an Eagles slaughter right here. I think the Eagles are going to run away with this game. Uh, if they don't, I will jump in the Schuylkill River. I mean, the Eagles are too good of a team to be, you know, to be, you know, playing down to their competition. Who are we? The Pittsburgh Pir uh, Pirates, Pengu Penguins. Oh boy, the Steelers, the Steel Boys. What are we, that team? We're going to play down to our competition. I mean, knowing the fact that the Steelers are in the playoffs, and it could be an all-Philadelphia, or I guess I'm sorry, an all-Pennsylvania Super Bowl, uh, I guarantee you the Steelers are going to lose. Calling it right now, they're going to lose to the Texans. It could have been an all-Pennsylvania Super Bowl. Philly, look at that. I knew it. They lose by three points right there, but what are you going to do? You can't can't beat them, you join them. So, Pittsburgh played down their competition. I mean, probably one of the last chances they had at getting Roethlisberger another ring. But Carson Wentz, though, is on a march right now. He's getting his team in striking distance of the end zone. Yeah, Zach Ertz just being the weapon he is at catching Everything thrown to him. Bit insane when you think about it. Doug Peterson, pretty thrilled, it looks like. I mean, yeah, fast forwarding a little bit. 750 left in the first quarter. Let's drop back. Gonna spin out right here. Let's throw across the field to none other than Alshon Jeffrey. And Jeffrey is going to step in for a touchdown right there. A nice 6 0 lead to start the game off for the Philadelphia Eagles. And I mean, if you strike first with the Eagles, you're going to win the game. This offense is too explosive. It's too good to, you know, just be losing to second-rate teams like Atlanta. No offense to Atlanta and the Falcons. I think they're a very valuable team. I think they're a very adequate team. I think they just are misusing talent. I mean, you had Julio Jones, who was a top two, three receiver in the league behind, you know, DeAndre Hopkins and Antonio Brown, if you want to put those three in any order you'd like. You had him with no touchdowns and, what is it, seven weeks, ten weeks it took him to get a touchdown? I mean, talk about misuse of talent right there. How do you have the best receiver, like a top three receiver in the league, and you can't get him a touchdown pass? I don't know, I feel like that's just... That's poor play calling. That's poor play design. That you're not getting your main offensive weapon in the ability to score right there. But fourth and 18 now for Atlanta. And uh, talking about uh, not allowing Julio Jones to score, uh, their special teams can't score either. Matt Bosher gets his punt, uh, gets punt, his kick blocked. But nice, easy block right there. I believe that is what. Russell Douglas, he's usually our edge guy right there. 32, I believe that's Russell Douglas. Let's go to number 32, Russell Douglas. Doug Peterson, pretty thrilled right there about that, setting his QB out to continue his, you know, historic drive right here. I mean, he won the MVP already. How can he cap it off better than winning the Super Bowl? End the curse right there. I mean, if a QB wins uh, MVP, they don't win the Super Bowl. Last time that happened, it was Kurt Warner. I mean, Brady won it uh, when they played the Eagles in 52, uh, and Brady lost. I mean, technically the Eagles, yes, had the MVP of the season, but it wasn't the quarterback, so the curse doesn't really work out the same there. It's not like it's the Madden curse, you know, where uh, if you're on the Madden cover, you have, like, a horrible down year. I mean, or your team plays just god-awful. But... Brandon Graham, though, not being on the Madden cover, not being a QB, uh, had another very, very good season this year. 
Not sure if he had 32 sacks, but I believe he had at least 20. And that's a very good, very good season for Brandon Graham. I mean, got his back to back Super Bowls last year. I mean, they're looking. Eagles, I'm sorry, looking to three peat. If we're not looking to three peat, what are you doing? Why are you even in the playoffs right now? You won two in a row. You gotta create that dynasty, you know? You gotta you gotta be the best. You gotta beat the best to be the best. And right now, Atlanta's one of the best teams in the football. And I think that has a lot to do with Matt Ryan. I mean Matt Ryan, uh not a I won't call Matt Ryan an elite quarterback. I would call him a franchise quarterback. Uh, franchise, entering a franchise, an elite quarterback is an elite quarterback uh, will make everyone around him better, regardless of who they are. Uh, Tom Brady is the epitome of elite quarterbacks. You know, he took Chris Hogan, uh, an undrafted free agent who got cut by the Bills of all teams, made him a great receiver. Julian Edmond was a seventh round, you know, camp hand. Made him a great receiver. Danny Amendola, uh, same thing. Made him like, made him a great receiver. Got him paid twice between that Miami and Detroit. I mean, but you think of Matt Ryan though. Matt Ryan's a franchise quarterback right there. A franchise quarterback being, you know, you got 12 years. You have your quarterback, and now for the next 12 years. You don't have to think about drafting a quarterback. You don't look, you know, draft comes around first round, you don't get the quarterbacks. You don't look at them at all. Unless, you know, Matt Ryan starts to like 35 years of age. Once he starts getting up there in age, then you start looking at quarterbacks. But for at least 12 years, you don't look at quarterbacks in the first round. You just draft backup quarterbacks if you draft quarterbacks at all. If not, you just sign, you know, uh, free agent, you know, undrafted free agents. That's a franchise quarterback right there. That's what Matt Ryan is. Matt Ryan's gonna give Atlanta like three or four more very good years. Uh, they won't look at quarterbacks in the first round. He's gonna start regressing a little more. I mean, who doesn't get a little older? Uh, their records gonna start to slip, and they're gonna start at quarterbacks. But they're not gonna start him right away. No, they're not gonna start him right away at all. They're gonna let Matt Ryan, you know, finish up the contract he's on. Let him play out his career. And they have an opportunity to retire, to move on. Um, and then they will start the new guy after having him sit behind Matt Ryan for a year or two. I mean, it's kind of what they wanted to do to Brett Favre. Brett Favre is the same way. Brett Favre, you know, gave Green Bay, was it, 12, 13 good years. And then they're like, all right, we'll draft Aaron Rodgers in the first round because you're starting up there in age. And then for like four years, uh... Brett Favre held the Green Bay Packers hostage. Same thing with uh, Ben Roethlisberger. Ben Roethlisberger, I don't think, makes talent around him better. I think Brett Favre has gotten very good talent in his career around him. So it's kind of helped bail him out a little bit. But I don't personally see Ben Roethlisberger as an elite quarterback. I mean, is he a Hall of Famer? Yeah, he's a Hall of Famer. He's got two rings. I mean, no matter what you want to say about his personality and his off the field problems it doesn't matter because you don't go to the hall of fame because you're a nice guy you go to the hall of fame because you put up some of the best numbers in nfl history and ben rosberg has done that but uh getting back to this game though at least eagles up a ton right now not really a ton they're up a touchdown right there pulling away i mean this atlanta team is a hard fought team I mean, they don't call them the Dirty Birds for nothing. They are hitting, they're hitting Eagles receivers as they cross the line. So Dirty Birds are in full effect right now against this Eagles team. I mean, Eagles are playing them very nicely. They're not doing anything to provoke them. They're not. I don't know. They're not cheap shotting quarterbacks. I mean, it's a little dirty of a push right there by Zach Ertz, but that was after he crossed the line and gotten hit by the defensive back right there. But on defense right now, third and four for the Atlanta Falcons. And Nick Bosa is going to get in there for his third sack of the game, forcing a fourth and 11 right there. I mean, Bosa's pretty pumped up right now. He knows that, uh, he knows what he wants, and he wants a shot at his first ring. He knows the Eagles are back to back champs. 
He knows that they traded up to get him personally. So I think that Nick Bosa is going to play his heart out to show this team what he's got. That he's the best and he deserves to be there. I mean, how would you feel if you were drafted fourth overall and uh, a team trade up to get you? Trade what? Two, two second round picks and Jeremy Macklin to get him. I mean, with our second pick, we drafted Trey Lamar. With our third first round pick, we drafted offensive lineman, I think. Not entirely sure. I think no, we drafted a safety. That's who we drafted. But Amir Abdullah running that ball up the middle goes through a lot of uh, Falcons right there and scores the touchdown. First rushing touchdown of the game. That will give the Eagles a two-score lead. Something that they have not had all game. Something that they are looking forward to having and holding on to throughout the rest of this game. I mean, once you get a two-score lead, it makes it very hard for a team to catch up to you. Because not only do they have to score within the next 10, 10 and a half minutes, they then have to hold you down from running out the clock. Look at that. See, they score, but they leave, you know, 4 10 left. Eagles are in the red zone. Now they have to prevent us from scoring and hand the ball off to Amir Abdullah again. We're going to just run the clock out. You know, four, four bits left in the uh, second right now. Kind of forgot to turn two clock on, unfortunately, so that's paying the butt. But look at that. Fourth, uh, third inches right now. And we're going to run the ball for the third consecutive time right there. We're gonna get stopped before crossing the, you know, the end zone right there. So we are just eating away at this. We spent, you know, a minute and a half with the clock moving, and we've gone 11 yards. 11, uh, not 11 yards for almost two minutes now. We're going just about two minutes. Right about. Uh, it doesn't matter. We're a little short of holding up for two minutes. I mean, 4 10 is when we started, so we would have taken another 45 seconds. But we do get the score right there. Leave the Atlanta Falcons with just under three minutes left. So they get all three timeouts, the two minute warning, but they have to score twice within that allotted time and force the Eagles to turn the ball over or force a punt. So we have to hold them from converging now and running the clock out because once they get a first down because if uh, look at that fourth and three right now took only 55 seconds for that already they've already wasted the uh, two minute warning but look at that though pass completed over the middle I mean that clock's ticking tick 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 but uh they end up scoring took the entire of what's left of the out fourth quarter, and they're trying to onside kick it with four seconds left in the game. Deshaun Jackson has possession of it. I mean, I get it. They're gonna try to onside kick it, go for a hail mary, and tie it up and force an overtime. Problem is, this Eagles special team is too good. They are too good for that, and they are going to be off the clock. If uh, we eventually decide to hit the button, we will. You let the clock, and there we go. The Eagles are moving on to the next round. They have defeated the Atlanta Falcons, 35-28. Uh, Falcons with 351 passing yards against 255. Eagles have outrun them by just about 50 yards right there. Right. No, almost 60, almost 70 yards right there. They outran them. Amir um, Abdullah, big game, 59 rushing yards. Corey Clement with 69 rushing yards. Uh, Dula had two touchdowns, Corey Clement and Wentz did not have any. I mean, pretty good game. Receiving, though, Zach Ritz with a huge game, 139 receiving yards. Uh, Johnson allowed a sack, and so did Grant Fisher. Uh, Mills led to a 10 tackles, uh, followed by Jenkins and Darby with a 9 and 8. But if you guys like this episode, make sure you like and subscribe. If you guys missed this, such a post down below. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Definitely means a lot. Send the notification bells to do up multiple times a day. Peace out, Rock on YouTube. Stay classy.